Wesley, he's a dick. He's a dick, dick, dick. You know, Why are you bringing up Wesley? He's not yeah, even in the episode. Could have gone this entire episode <laughs> without having to rag like on Wesley. Again. I know he's cool. he wasn't. He wasn't even in the episode. But he we did. He's cool. <laughs> Much more. We didn't even have to talk about him. No, we, don't we, bring him up now. We, we no, could have just. Pre- you could have just Wesley. pretended no he wasn't more, there. No more talk he of Wesley. He is the name we don't speak of. <laughs> or today we don't have yeah. to, so we shouldn't. Yeah. Oh, no, boy. Wesley in this episode. <laughs> oh, I, I wonder how Will Wheaton feels today about it. Like, probably I, I like a piece I, of shit. He's like, he's like, dude, I, <laughs> I, I, I was involved in that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> kind of when you I know, when you, I know he takes it in stride for a lot of his career, but I wonder how he really feels. Kind you know? of when you're like a reformed gang probably member, resentful. You know? <laughs> yeah, he's like, it's like, it's like a reformed gang member where you're like, oh, I did these horrible things, and now I repent, and you know, I went to jail for a couple of years, and fuck, dude. I well, we spent a lot on that tattoo yeah. removal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those tattoos don't get. Or removed. you can't remove it, so you have to like turn it into something yeah. else. You know? Yeah. You know, like bridge. Have you ever seen that show where like the tattoo fixers were like, they oh, I have I have a cheeseburger and fries on my chest, but now I'm getting married. <laughs> Wait, uh, why would you take that off? Why would Why would that need fixing? <laughs> yeah. Answer oh, I don't like that. I, I don't oh, like that. It looked really bad. Like they were like, it's like a really That's janky. Fine. That's cheeseburger okay. and okay, fries. Okay, so long as they replaced it with a yeah. nicer cheeseburger and fries, I'm cool. No, they replaced it with like a huge hawk. It was oh, like that. <laughs> bigger cheeseburger, bigger ass. fries. <laughs> and underneath, you you write cheeseburgers in paradise. <laughs> Jimmy Buffett said so. <laughs> oh, man. The Undertaker, uh, he was once married to this lady named Sarah. Mm-hmm. Um, actually spelled like uh, the Sarah I'm in a relationship with. And S-A-R-A. He had a tattooed on his neck, which is like one of the most painful places to tattoo. Yeah. And it, it was just an, and because it's on his neck, you can't not have it everywhere in promotional footage and shit. So he's like this really huge imposing guy who's supposed to be like an undead zombie. And he has Sarah on his, his neck and then well. he, and then he divorces her. So, <laughs> so then he has to get another tattoo that just covers it up with some other shit. And then mm. he lives his life that way. That's, uh, I would have just put a band aid on it forever, <laughs> <laughs> like a I, like a Nelly band aid. <laughs> I went to I went to so I have a tattoo guy and he's kind of very like cocky, and uh, I was once getting a tattoo tattoo and some guy walked in and and immediately because so I was facing away from the door right so I'm I'm looking at the tattoo guy and uh-huh. I see him looking towards the door and he just rolls his eyes and the guy comes in and he's like hey guys um. So I haven't my lady's Max lady's t- name tattooed on my neck, and I want to get it covered. Uh-huh. And then he goes on and on and explain like he's trying to like make it seem like this wasn't a mistake. Look, like it wasn't a mistake. I just want to get it covered. Blah, blah blah. Like clearly, like you know, <laughs> he's not with his lady anymore, or she's dead. <laughs> Either way. Um, yeah. And <laughs> and he, and then the tattoo guy goes, Nah, we're not gonna do that. Get out of here. <laughs> I was like, Whoa, dude. it's horrible. Dude. Was he like that? Was one of my best works. I'm not gonna tattoo that. No, one. It wasn't his work. He he was just like, no, nah, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna. Oh, uh, is he just? Yeah. Does he just like feel like I don't want to do with that? Deal with that type of. Yeah, shit? Yeah, yeah. He's like, I don't want. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, it's fine. Get out of here. <laughs> and then he's like, all right. And he didn't even like. He wasn't like, well, this is bad service. Like any Karen would do. Like he was just yeah. like, all right. <laughs> he, just, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, fair enough. Fair, fair enough. enough. Yeah. I, 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 you do. Uh, you don't want to do it. If you don't yeah. want to do it, you wouldn't do a good job anyway. Yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll leave yeah. that somewhere else. Um, yeah. This interaction was, went better than expected. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if the Undertaker went somewhere. And they're like, no, get the fuck out of here, you undead <laughs> fuck. <laughs> You uh, live with your sins. Yeah. <laughs> or die with them. <laughs> or or not die. Undie. Yeah. Remain undead with them. <laughs> yes. Speaking of undead, there's uh, a cast member from Ghost in this episode. Uh, what? What what cast member from Ghost? Uh Vincent uh Chivalli? 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 Yeah. Chivalli. I, I recognize him as the guy from the beginning of Amadeus who tries to get Salieri out of his room. That's well, what yeah. I remember yeah. him as. <laughs> yeah. I he's guess I haven't of, seen go- he, he's yeah. a he's a very famous character actor, but yeah. I remember him I remember him in Ghost. He was he was a ghost in the subway, remember? They kept Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Is he, 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 he the one that tells him yeah. how to like slap 
physical things eventually. He, he trains Patrick Swayze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, 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 uh, he's his, he's his, uh, he's his yeah. Obi Wan. Yeah, he's like teaching Unagi. him how to use. Yeah. <laughs> He's his sensei. Yeah. Uh, I've been watching a lot of Cobra Kai, so I have that oh. mentality stuck in my brain. Yeah. Or we finished it as a what, whatever. Salieri, Ooh, yeah. we have something <laughs> special for you. Something you're going to love. <laughs> uh, welcome to newbie Star Trek, everyone. Uh, that's what this is. Uh, so this is new- Ricardo's first journey yeah. through Star Trek with us. Uh, it's a long Marvin. journey. It is a long, it's a long journey. Even yeah. TNG by itself, it's quite a journey. We're There's, not even yeah. season one, man. No, no, we're not even. And then uh, also Dan's with us. Uh, oh, Dan hi. Is here. Yeah. Hello. And uh, yeah, this week we had watched The Arsenal of Freedom, which even after watching, I actually didn't remember watching this episode before. So this might have been one that just left my memory. And it's huh. a pleasantly interesting episode. At least from the Jordy perspective, because it's just very yeah, interesting that he's... yeah, this turns into a very Jordy heavy episode by the end of it all. But yeah, it's real good character development for Jordy. Yeah, yeah. Before they make him a, a weird, creepy sex pervert. That's um, true. <laughs> <laughs> they start. They start turning him. He starts as the, the potential like captain material. I know. It's almost like it's like, hey, we're going to put Jory through his paces. We're going to give him some challenges and hurdles to overcome. And then he's yeah. going to have sex with a holodeck. Yeah. Oh, it's a bit of a spoiler for Ricardo, but we'll see. Don't spoil <laughs> shit, dude. My bad. Uh, damn, damn, this episode. Don't, don't worry. The weirdness <laughs> comes from elsewhere. Oh, it gets <laughs> like you. it's surprising how I don't know why they give all the weirdness to him. I don't feel like he deserves it. It's because they don't have to look him in the eye. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, I said it. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, he's, uh, bl- he's blind. <laughs> No, he's not. Well, yes, he is. But I mean, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not saying it's because he's blind. I'm saying that he doesn't have to. He doesn't have his eyes visible. <laughs> it's that you can't see him. Uh, this episode first aired <laughs> on April 11th of 1988. Dan, if you could please tell us what happened around that time, that'd be great. All right. So um, this episode aired three weeks after the previous episode aired. So there was a three week break in between. Um, in the interim, uh, not a whole lot of notable stuff, ever, or at least not stuff that I care about, but something that, <laughs> that was uh, notable to me was on March 30th, Beetlejuice debuted in theaters. Yeah. Yeah, it was a pretty good movie, Beetlejuice. Yeah. And uh, I think that was a Wednesday release because two days later on April Fool's Day, Stand and Deliver released in theaters. Oh, oh. yeah, dude. However, what it did not calculus? take... <laughs> 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 yes, it taught everyone the magic of Kakulus, and it did not top the box office because Beetlejuice was right there. So that's true. It didn't yeah. stand a chance, really. Yeah, and Beetlejuice actually dominated the box office for several weeks after that. But I mean, with good reason. Beetlejuice was cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. But on the actual date of four eleven eighty eight, the sixtieth Academy Awards aired on the mm. same day. Mm. Cool. Um, and that's the one where Last Emperor won Best Picture. Just to give Last an idea. Em- and that's all I got. What is the Last Emperor? Why the um, it's the one with that little kid who like is the Last Emperor. <laughs> of China. <laughs> it's uh, Bernardo Bertolucci, right? Uh, I forget, but um, it, it's the scene that that Simpsons referenced when Homer comes out with that big old hat and the stone cutters, and you like you just oh. giggling, and everyone like bows before him. Okay, thank you for putting it in a context. I understand. Yes. Yeah, like in the, originally in the movie, he's like it's just literally a little baby that like toddles out, and everyone has to bow before it because he's technically the emperor now. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Um, yes, it is Bernardo Bertolucci. There you go. Fantastic. Who well, better thanks, to Dan. direct a movie about China? Yeah, than an Italian director. Mm-hmm. So now that we have in our minds, we've had we have. Uh, Beetlejuice and Stand and Deliver. This leads directly into the Arsenal. Of Free- no, it no, it doesn't. Uh, Arsenal of Freedom. Uh, it's a very split episode. There's basically three subplots happening throughout the whole show. Uh, you got your hmm. well, that is that right because you got you got your um up top on the planet surface shit with Riker and team. Then you mm-hmm. have 
Picard and Beverly doing their thing, and then you have Jordy doing his thing. So oh, Picard, yeah, the Picard and Beverly thing. Could you uh, drive us through the plot? And- um, before I go on, mm-hmm. I want to discuss something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, every week, I try to pitch for the new for the new listeners. I try to pitch uh, uh, John Luke Picard in the remake of the Next mm-hmm, Generation, mm-hmm. right? And um, I have to look. Sometimes I'm, I don't have all my wits about me. I don't remember what I said. So I think I've said Jason Statham, which is my go-to, but he's also yes. in the transporter room. Uh, mm-hmm. I've said um, Vin Diesel, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Is that it? Is, yeah, you, you said, said Vin Diesel. You said, I believe you, said, you even said Ed Harris. Okay. Yeah, you said that Vin was Diesel. You had Ed Harris. I don't even and know. You I said, said that. Um, the comedian. Um, what's his name? Uh, Bill Burr. Bobby Lee. Bill Burr. Oh, Bill Burr. Bill Burr. Right. Yes. Bobby Lee. <laughs> I don't know why I had him. <laughs> Picard. Bobby Lee. Bobby Lee is Picard. Yeah. Uh oh, hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> he's just he's just an extremely annoying captain and yeah. actually can get nothing done. no. I just I just invented the better thing because that's Patrick Stewart as Bobby Lee. Yeah, yeah. You got to do Bobby Lee as Patrick Stewart. Yeah, yeah. So. the other way around. Make it so. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I hate oh, everything I like, I'm doing right now. Let's, I don't let's like get that. Past this. I don't like that at all. No, okay, no. Well, this well, is a bad <laughs> tangent. I shouldn't have bit. I shouldn't have bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll pitch my... my um, Please, pitch away. <laughs> my, uh, so, I, I'm. we have to diversify. We can't just have a white uh, John Luke Picard. So, uh, we, but we need, a, we, need a, we need somebody with gravitas. We need a we need a Idris Elba. I know he's already been in a Star Trek uh, movie, but mm, imagine mm. him shaved head and he is Jean Luc Picard. He can do it. Yeah, yeah, I mean he has he has the energy yeah. where he could play really stoic. Yeah, and and uh and smooth. I mean, like because because I don't know. And then but like another part of Patrick Stewart, which is like sort of a thing in the show, mm-hmm. but it never becomes. A thing in the movies is that he's clearly like an older man who is not necessarily physically in the best shape. So yeah. like, so his 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 strength is his dip- diplomacy and wits. Right. The mm-hmm. movies try to turn him into an action star. Like he does yeah. fucking like shoot, but he basically becomes Bruce Willis yeah. in the movies for whatever reason. But then you have use Elba. He's both. You know. Yeah. He is an action star, but he can also be like the statesman. You know. He's like a mullet. It's like business. <laughs> And a party, <laughs> you know. I, I've never heard Idris Elba compared to a mullet before, but <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he have no fully choice. agree. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> can't argue with that. I guess. And I have other. I actually, my list is growing for for my Picards. Uh, but each each episode, new Picard. I, I I appreciate it. Okay. Do you think you'll ever get to a point where you run out of Picards and just start no. going around the crew? <laughs> never. Never. Okay. Never. Just, dude. just checking. I'll just never checking. die. How Each long until you try to cast LeVar yeah. Burton as Picard? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll get there I soon. mean, this episode basically does. Yeah. So. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. there's your segue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Uh, so the episode starts off. I, I have a few questions okay. before I, we go please, on. Please, Um, What is the point of... of, of of the sh- what is the point of this? Like, what the fuck is the point? <laughs> not not this episode, but like, what the fuck? Is, what is the point of this universe? Like, like, are, are, are we supposed to be exploring? <laughs> yes, yes. I, I came at that, you with like a really big philosophical <laughs> question. It's a little like, hard to yeah. to latch yeah. on no, to that, an what, answer. No, no, that, 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 that. So here's here's the way it basically goes. Their ongoing ma- primary objective is exploration, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they are prepared for both hostility as well as just moment to moment. We have to do clerical shit for start fleet. Cause it's like, well, you're nearby this place. Can you help them out there while you're all, while you're on your way to check this other place out sort of thing. So sure. a lot of these missions are complications based out of that, you know, like it's, there's very, f- it's, there's surprisingly few episodes where it's literally just, we discovered a new place. Let's check it out, right? Like the the naked now, no, not the naked now. The 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 one they wear on that the uh, justice this is the one that the sexy planet. Um, that one mm. is a straight up. Oh, we discovered a new place. Let's check it out. Uh, but what's but the funny vast- is that they didn't even want to like uh, study it for like 
or, or no, they, they wanted seem to, to frame him. it. Yeah, they just <laughs> framed it more as like, hey, it is a great place to rest. I yeah, I mean, like it's the thing is also that um, because the, the the Enterprise is the flagship sh- uh, flagship, and they are more of a general purpose vehicle. So the, like they have a uh, vehicle, they have like um, starships in Starfleet that are like, oh, you're you're more of a military vehicle. So for example, when you watch um, Deep Deep Space Nine. Uh, part of Deep Space Nine's ongoing story is that there feels like there's a war ramping up, right? Or some mm-hmm. sort of big conflict. So they create a new ship called the Defiant. The Defiant is entirely a military vehicle, you know? But you also have other starships that exist that are like, oh, this is almost entirely um, a science vessel, right? I think Picard's original ship, the Stargazer, was a science vessel, which is why it handled the Battle of Maxia so poorly, and they mm. almost died. Uh, so I think there's varying types of ships like that, but because the enterprise is like a general purpose vehicle, oftentimes when they go to a planet, they're like, oh, we discovered something, but they may not necessarily always approach it scientifically. Like, you know how, like, um, when they accidentally flew to the edge of the galaxy or end of the universe or whatever, and they were pick data was like, this would be a great opportunity for scientific discovery. But yeah, it's like a rare and- moment where they f- actually refer to that mission like directly and kind of weigh that value yeah, against everything but then, they're doing. But then Picard's response is, but we're not a scientific ship. It would actually be better served by bringing over a science crew. So True. that's sort of their ongoing deal. Basically, the Enterprise is like their like big shiny ship that everyone mm. sort of focuses on, but it just does random things here and there. It's not really like a special purpose anything. Okay. That's why but, that's why that it allows them to do all sorts of bullshit stories like that are random. And shit. Okay. Well, Ricardo, does that answer your question? <laughs> that that gets me nowhere, dude. That you guys you guys just wasted your breath. <laughs> I barely talked. <laughs> I got plenty of breath left. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So these fuckers, they get they're like, "Hey, go investigate this this light cruiser, the USS mm. Drake." Um <laughs> They they've got some Pride online bling, yeah. <laughs> um, if you know what I mean. Uh, and so so they're looking for Drake, and Drake's out there. He's got the sweet lineup, and he's like he's <laughs> got the sweet Timberlands, and he's out there somewhere, and he's lost, and he's they're they're going to go find them. Yeah, uh, we're wondering why he never calls on your cell phone anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and then they're like, hey, uh, so they're looking for them at this this place called. M- it's it's like it's like a Greek island, Mykonos. Nope, it's Minos. Minos. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so they're going to this minion fucking planet and they're looking for the Drake. And and so of course they're gonna send an away team, and it's always the same goddamn people. They like it's like they don't have <laughs> other people to send. Change yeah, it up a bit. You always know? sending their most important people away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so they're like, hey, okay, we're gonna send off. Some Which cool in this people. episode becomes a problem that yeah. they sent their most yeah, yeah. important people away, and and you find out that like it totally that um, does. you find out that Riker used to be a captain on the ship. No, no, or he, was, he was, was offered the role of being of a ca- captain of the USS yeah. Drake, but right. he declined it to become a uh, second in command of the Enterprise. Yeah, which is yes. a very interesting career move. Basically, yeah, why, why would he do that? Basically, it's basically like. If you're a cook, right, you're offered head chef position at like a good steakhouse, right? Yeah, yeah. Or you're offered uh, a, like a, a line cook or even sous chef position. More but like in sous France, chef, I'd say. Yeah, sous chef position in France at one of the best at the restaurant in France, right? So you're not the head, but it's potentially better for your career because you worked at the best restaurant in the world in France. Oh, okay. Have that on your record. Then the next ship you could command, it could even be the Enterprise. Who knows? You know? So that he was thinking more of the long game than he was thinking more of. He also, it's clear at this point that he idolizes Picard a lot. Like yeah. part of why he joined is because he, he wanted to kind of meet one of his heroes. So he's sort of decided to go about that route and see how that's going. It's working out so far, I'd say. Yeah. It's interesting because... That that plot point of him wanting to be a captain comes up a lot throughout the series. Yeah. And it it's because they can't really change. It's like a sitcom, right? They can't really be like, oh, yeah, now you're captain. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it becomes kind of a weird sticking point later where this is like, mm-hmm. uh, are you 
what's happening with your career? You've been here a while. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, that tension will ramp up over the course of seasons. But for now, it's still comfortable. Yeah, for now, it's totally fine. Yeah. Um, and so they're going to this Greek island of, of the minions, and they're going to go look for the, the Drake. Mm-hmm. And they scan the planet, and there's no, there's no indication that there's intelligent life. They're like, there's nothing. Um, but this episode, we quickly realize, is the Incredibles episode. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, the, the, the Incredibles oh. episode. Syndrome, the Syndrome Island. Um, yes. That's episode. literally what it is, isn't like, it? Like, it even yeah. has similar, like, vegetation. Like, the yeah, tropical yeah. palm tree yeah. stuff. Yeah, and you have the, the yeah. robots that are yeah. learning. And you I, don't have... wanna, I don't want to blame Brad Bird for stealing this episode, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's for the courts to decide. Uh, I, I want to I give a very slight retraction. At the very end of the last episode, I said oh, okay. that get ready for, like, orbs. I was imagining the, the robots in this episode, and I thought they were orbs, but they're not. They're more like yeah. astro um, power drills. Yeah, that shoot lasers. They're more more like power drills on fishing rods (laughs) that float around (laughs) the set. (laughs) We'll we'll get to them, but uh, you will get for for the if you're a new listener, you'll get no retractions from me. I'm gonna (laughs) I'm gonna miss. I'm gonna say things wrong. I'm gonna quote things wrong. But you know what? Fuck you. Uh, Let's continue. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Fuck you. Uh, Let's continue. Let's continue. (laughs) Um, So then they scan the thing and they're like. Yeah, huh? that's a good move for meetings. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, basically yeah. what Congress does every day. Say yeah, fuck yeah. you. Yeah. Let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, so, so then they, they scan the planet. No, in, no intelligent life. And then this, they get this, this, um, this signal, and it's this video. It's mm-hmm. well, they don't know it's video. It's weird. I don't understand how they, how they, when they start trying to con, like <laughs> Picard is like, hey, you friend, talk identify to me. yourself. <laughs> yeah, and the guys, all, yes. Would you like weapons? Would you like to hear more? <laughs> and it's like, of course it's recording, you idiot. God damn it, dude. You it's essentially oh. a space infomercial. Yeah, yeah. That basically is trying um, to solve it. It's that so, thing where you uh, get someone's voicemail and it's that stupid thing where you say, hey, yeah. hello, hello. And you're and like, yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello. Hey. Well, I'm not here right now, but if you want to leave a message. <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. You has, has someone actually done that to you? I've always heard of that as a joke, but has anyone ever done that to you? Oh, my, my dad is like that. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, so when he answers he answers the same way yeah so, so it's so, so it's really difficult because yeah. i have yeah. to wait a beat and for him to go hello hello and i'm like oh yeah it's really him let me continue <laughs> uh, uh i need i'd like i like we're slowly collecting more and more information about your dad first off true. Uh, he let a fridge fall on you. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had a hernia. I'm, I'm not uh, so sure about that hernia anymore now. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, he's guilty of that. He's also guilty of putting the phone on speakerphone all the time. It's like, why? Why? <laughs> why do all old people put their phone on speakerphone? I don't get it. Um, just hold it to your ear and put up the volume. Uh, so, so they get the signal and they they they're like, all right, well, I guess it's a it's something that that's that keeps beaming out a, a signal. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Let's send an away team and, and figure this out. Send let's send our best. So they send Riker. Mm-hmm. They send uh, Lieutenant Yar, right? Mm-hmm. They send <laughs> Data, mm-hmm. and they send who's the fourth? No, is it that's fourth? it. Just three, three, right? Yeah, yeah. nobody else. Because Tasha yeah. specifically says, "Let's send a small party yeah. before we send a bunch of people." Yeah. Just in I case. think she just wanted to be alone with them too. <laughs> and so, well, she's already been with Data, you know. True. Yeah, so it's like, no. and, um, and she's made eyes at Riker. Like yeah. at least in an in an objectifying yeah. manner before, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which it's her prerogative, you know. She's an yeah. independent woman. Um, so then she they they go the the way team gets there and it's it's exactly like we said, it's a tropical planet just like fucking Syndrome's Island. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and immediately they got their phasers ready and they start looking. They start looking for for any signs of the Drake. They're a little beat, you know, uh, a shoelace. <laughs> <laughs> Something that a will point them. Beat. <laughs> yeah. A shoelace. Yeah. <laughs> shoelace from a Timberland. Something, dude. Just something that will be like, oh, he's been here. Oh, and so um, so this planet they went to, the Mykonos, um, it, it's 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 a it's um it's a weapons planet. 
we find out really quickly. They sell weapons. They make weapons. They don't care who it is. It's like, yeah. if you want weapons, we're going to sell them to you. Uh, Christian, right, and the, Jews, and the merchant who seems to run the whole yeah, joint, that's Muslims, the Vincent Chiavelli. Yeah, yeah. We don't give a shit. Also we'll known as weapons. Long John Lovitz. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess I guess you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this character actor you would recognize from everything. Uh Fast Times Richmond Richmond High. Uh mm-hmm. Ghost. Uh, he's actually in Tomorrow Never Dies. I forgot about that. Oh yeah. Um Oh, he's the 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 the, the torturer guy. Yeah. The guy yeah, yeah the, oh. the guy who says I'm ve- I'm very skilled. Yeah. At- he's in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Oh yeah, he's yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. He's a v- very famous actor. Like prolific. He, yeah, prolific. He's, there you go. That's the word. He's a man about town. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> he's a he's a sa- song and dance man. <laughs> and uh, so so then they, they they're looking for something. Somebody, th- th- some weapons makers out there, some minions at least. Uh, they're not intelligent <laughs> life, so that could they could be alive, and the, the scanner <laughs> might not get them. But they find that there's weapons. There's weapons on the planet, and they they seem to be you know. Th- fairly like like somebody just died recently or something you know Mm -hmm. and then we we get introduced to uh the first of the crew members that takes over the the comms um while data's away and Mm -hmm. this actress you would recognize i recognize her immediately as soon as she came on screen i'm like i know that lady i know that lady because she is in rambo 2 she's the female lead in rambo uh, sorry rambo versus blood part 2 Oh, oh, okay. Oh, she's okay. Rambo's okay. love interest. Uh, okay, and he has okay. the Avenger at the end. Actually, he avenges her for the next five movies. Because uh, <laughs> that was the only love he ever, you know, he ever experienced. Mm. Um, but yeah, this actress. Um, Julia uh, Nixon. Nixon. Yeah. No, yeah, that's it. Julia Nixon. Uh, you would recognize right away uh, if you've seen Rambo First Blood Part 2. Uh, mm. And... Uh, I was like, I know this lady. And then, um, so she's one of the first people you see that's taken over the comms. She's We're an We're going to come back to her. Yeah, she's an ensign. We're going to come back to her. Yeah. Right. And then quickly, they keep scanning. They, they, they keep saying no scans, no intelligent life. And then Riker comes across this dude who he recognizes from the Drake. Mm-hmm. He's like, I know this guy. We, 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 him and Drake and I go way back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, Captain Rice. Yeah, Captain Rice. And he's like, hey, and it's funny how now that you mentioned that Riker has like back issues, you see that like like the first thing he does when he's. Yeah, he Captain Morgan's immediately. Yeah, he yeah. Captain Morgan's because <laughs> I guess it's it's easier on his back because just having to stand yeah. there for fucking yeah. 10 minutes would probably. I actually saw a Reddit post that's specifically about that. Like, because um, there was a guy who's a Star Trek fan who says, I have a back injury that's almost exactly the same as his. Mm. And basically, he was like, basically, what people with this kind of back injury want to do is basically be in any pose that isn't standing up straight. So That's even crazy. even putting your hands in your pockets helps tremendously, which is why he does that a lot. But the problem is that their uniforms have no are pockets. basically jumpsuits and have no pockets at all. Yeah. Right. So he has to figure out all these different ways to kind of just stand because because they're probably just standing around on set all yeah. day, like just taking doing lean take on your cake. elbow. I mean, lean on your knee. Part- yeah, like raise your like right a, hand. Yeah. <laughs> Put your left hand here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's he's yeah. It's 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 he's probably hurting. <laughs> yeah. Poor guy. Um yeah. so he so this guy is uh the actor's name is uh Marco Rodriguez. And he's another character actor that you would recognize from a bunch of things. Mm-hmm. Um he was mo- he was in Cobra. That's where I, I recognize him from. He's like the crazy drug drug guy drugged out guy in the beginning of cobra mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. he's also in uh he's in the crow yeah dude uh <laughs> he's in a man apart with vin diesel one of my look cards uh <laughs> and uh yeah he's he's, a he's in a lot of tv actor. stuff yeah. too if yeah. i remember correctly yeah. uh I, the most recent thing that i remember seeing him in that i was like oh uh he was in once upon a time in hollywood he played the oh. bartender at the lancer oh okay cool yeah yeah okay and so, uh, so you have that character actor playing um, Captain Paul Rice, mm-hmm. and he. So they they start talking, and Paul does, clearly doesn't seem right, and Riker kind of recognizes it, and and Paul's asking very weird questions. Like so, not only so Data takes another reading, and there's no si- no signs of intelligent life. So that means that whatever this is is not human. Yeah, and it takes so, a while for them to actually confront the confront the thing about it though they keep well, like leading it on yeah it's well really i think weird. that like they're trying to figure out what it is they're like both asking questions trying to figure out like 
like this entity, whoever's taking form of, of, of rice is trying to figure out why they're there. Um, what they know, uh, what kind of ship they're in, what kind I of, want, I mean, I mean, I, I want to give have. props to Riker during this exchange for slipping in a masterful, your mama joke. Oh, what does he say? I don't remember it. What does he say? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, say God, the, the, the wording, uh, wait, hold on. Give me a second. <laughs> um, um, right, right before he, 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 uh, he, well, it's funny how he like trips up the computer. Like he right. says a weird, your, your mother joke, like, like who's in command or something. And like, it was, it's a stupid thing. Uh, Dan will find it right now. And then, then he asks, like, what, what do you, what, like, what kind of armor do you have? And then Riker just starts counting, randomly counting down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He yeah. Using, and, like, um, random. and, um, and then the, the rice disappears and you realize the hologram and it's being projected by this, uh, this robot, um, that looks like a sex toy. Oh yeah, yeah! If you look at it, you would quickly realize that it looks like a giant <laughs> sex toy. Also, I found the line. The line basically, uh, uh, Rice goes, "Riker, you didn't answer me. Who sent you here to look for me?" And Riker goes, <laughs> "Your mother. She's worried about you." There you go. <laughs> <laughs> See, how do your mother for me? Um, <laughs> and then he and starts s- referencing Shirley Temple for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the lollipop. Yeah. Where, uh, um. So then, very so then contemporary. They, yeah. <laughs> so then, so then this this uh, this giant sex toy in the air um, yeah. is like is like kind of like probing them, and then and then it puts it puts Riker in this weird like force field, yeah. and yeah. then and then uh, quickly uh, they, they dispatch it as as I as I call it, um, mm-hmm. and they shoot it down, mm-hmm. and they shoot it down with one like shot. It's like right, yeah, yep. And then uh, they're they're looking into Riker's situation, and he's basically like alive but he's in this weird state where it's in, it's in like a stasis bubble. field yeah. yeah yeah and poor jonathan so, frakes has to stand perfectly upright now. yeah and he's like god, <laughs> oh, damn god it, dude. i didn't think about <laughs> that yeah, yeah. yeah he should have been sitting down when they froze him um, <laughs> or or they should have frozen while he was in the captain morgan pose yeah. that would have been fine so captain picard's like oh my god and he's he's pacing around the bridge and he's like oh my god so like uh you know wreckers stuck in this thing and blah blah blah. he's encased in this weird thing and so he he <laughs> <laughs> he thinks the best idea, and this is what makes him a very stupid fucking captain. Yeah. He thinks that the best idea is, you know what? I'm going to leave. Yeah, I'm going to leave. Why? I'm going to go down there <laughs> with Beverly Crusher, and I'm going to leave Jordy, the blind dude, in charge. <laughs> uh, look, I get it. He's he's very he's got the predator vision, but like <laughs> <laughs> he trusts him now. Worf in the Worf. last. <laughs> you think uh, it'd be, it would be that dude? You know, yeah, but it's funny because, uh, like, um, Troy directly tells him, "I, I strongly recommend you don't do this." And he goes, "Yeah, noted." And then yeah, he goes yeah. and immediately gets in trouble. <laughs> yeah, he contributes nothing to the mission. No, no. <laughs> um, so Beverly Crusher and and Picard get beamed down, and Riker's standing still in back pain. You could tell that he's in back pain because he's just staring off into the distance, going, "Oh my god." <laughs> I'm in another place. I'm in another place. I'm in another place. And so they're trying to get him out. Um, yeah. And then, um, y- so this is where the two storylines split apart. So you yeah. have the the away team storyline and the the bridge storyline. So then the little sex toy comes back. Yeah, starts shooting at them. So the captain and Beverly run one way, and for some reason. <laughs> Data and Yara just stand there. They're like, we, we beat one of these. Why would you run, you idiots? <laughs> we already shot them down. So so they run and the little sex toy follows them. And then Beverly Crusher falls into this hole in a very weird manner. It's very first, weird. Yeah. First she throws the things that she has in her hand. I know. <laughs> and then she turns around and kind of falls backward. But yeah. you're like, you didn't really fall. It's like, like half practice, but half accident. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's and like then, they had a plan, but then something else happened. And then they just said, that's good yeah, enough. Yeah. yeah. It's it's it, like, I think, I'm pretty sure it's because Gates McFadden isn't very good at like a stunt, but it right. had to be her. So she's like, ah, this is, is this a fall? Like, this is like, it's like their 10th take. And they're like, ah, yeah. uh, sure. That'll, we'll print that one. Um, so on. she falls into this hole and pulls Picard with her and it's like <laughs> this weird cave that they're in and I don't know what kind of injury Beverly Crusher has but um, <laughs> it's a weird injury like she's cold 
But like it's weird. It's like yeah. she has a concussion, a broken yeah. arm, and a broken leg or something. Yeah. Like, and her back's broken. It's like yeah. being broken in half. I don't know. Everything, dude. Everything yeah. is broken. Yeah, she's yeah. just yeah. she's just Bruce Wayne in the middle of the Dark Knight Rises right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she's gotta learn um how to how to strengthen her back. She's got to get her vertebrae put back into place by that one dude that they can't see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Jordy she becomes completely in covered in sand. Which yeah. Is yeah. Odd, too. Yeah. She's like, got to like, crawl out of the cave. <laughs> Basha. 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 Uh, Basha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, God damn it, dude. <laughs> and, and so Yara is fighting the sex toy in the air. And yeah. it, it, she's like, I can't. I keep missing it. It's adorable that the <laughs> yeah. way it, like it's clearly on a string and like swinging back and forth. It's really adorable. It actually looks almost like a motion graphic. It, it doesn't even look like it's swinging naturally. Yeah, it's really weird looking. Like, <laughs> and then uh. their great idea is like, look, I'll shoot. I'll shoot at it, and then it's moving. You shoot right next to it, and then we'll get it. Mm. Yeah, and then we'll cross <laughs> so, the streams. Yeah, crossing streams, and then they'll kill it. So th- they they beat it. But they're like, oh, we. They realize, like, oh, it's well. They don't really realize it here, but they realize that it changed its patterns, basically, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Um. So they're trying to they they're trying to like get a hold of Picard and and um perfectly crusher, but like they're like, oh, they left. They just ran off for some reason. Well, they could have just waited two minutes and shut the thing down. <laughs> Cowards. But Beverly Crusher is such a <laughs> wimp. She just fucking ran off into the jungle. Yeah, why did they both sh- start running yeah. when the when the sex toys started shooting lasers at them? Yeah. What idiots! If why come to the planet thing, if you're just gonna run? Yeah. Away? <laughs> they didn't know about the sex toys. <laughs> yeah. If if we know one thing is you never run in a jungle planet because you might run into predators. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the predator wants running in the, the jungle, chase. Period. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so then, uh, data is like, he analyzes like the, the, the spectrum thing around Riker and he like reverses it and gets him out of there. And, and Riker is like, like kind of like drunk. He comes out of there <laughs> drunk. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and he's like, data's like, oh, his vital signs seem normal. He's just drunk. Um, and so, uh, the, you have Jordy up there in charge and uh, he's very comfortable in captain's chair. Uh, yeah. and so they get attacked. So basically yeah. they get attacked by even a by even a bigger sex toy that you eventually <laughs> see but it's invisible right now. Right, right. It's interesting cuz this is his second time in the command uh, the captain's chair now cuz before during the um right. The thing where everyone had the the covid, they yeah. he, he took over but only for a little bit cuz he also got covid and had to step down. But now he's being it's it's like interesting. It seems like the show is trying to set him up as like he like foreshadowing that he's going to be a captain one day or something because they keep putting yeah. him in that position. Yeah. Like more than more so than pick than Riker, which is interesting. Like Riker, I don't think he's ever actually had that much command in the ship before to the yeah, point like where he's put through a real trial by fire here. Yeah. yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah. So then, um, so then you, <coughs> excuse me. And so then you have, um, you have uh, them being attacked on, on, on the, on the ship and they keep, they basically can't when when they're about to like fight back and shoot like a uh, phase on phase on love. I don't know why that came from. <laughs> <laughs> Torpedoes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. They they uh, <laughs> the thing moves and they miss each time, yeah. which is weird. Like for uh, it's like for a ship this sophisticated, like they have the thing that could replicate anything. They have a transporter room with with Jason Statham they could afford him <laughs> and they could afford the hologram room the the holodeck that could basically replicate in life right but they can't afford a smart enough system that could calculate where it's <laughs> going to be and fucking shoot it down i don't understand well they um, try but yeah. i guess i guess it's the implication yeah. is like they're so advanced. Like that happens a lot in the Star Trek, right? It's like these guys are so much more advanced than us. You know what's weird it. about this though? It's like the the big sex toy up in the sky is so much better at owning the Starfleet than the ones on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Why is there a huge one on the ground? Successfully beat like maybe three, four different models, but the one up in the sky is like, yeah, this one's real good. You can't beat yeah, why this is, one. Why isn't the ground one in, also invisible? And huge, yeah, yeah. And, dist- <laughs> and so, so, so then uh, this dude from engineering just shows up out of nowhere. Yeah, this motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> this motherfucker. Sucks. 
Yeah, I want to. He literally punch him. comes out of nowhere and <laughs> no. just starts yelling at Jordy. Yeah. Yeah, Jordy, uh, you, you relinquish the power to me because I'm I'm a white dude. <laughs> That's literally yeah. what happened to Argyle. Argyle was such a nice, like amenable fellow who seemed to just want to do his I job. I think that's exactly yeah. why he wasn't chosen for this role. It's like he's too nice. <laughs> yeah. But the, yeah, because yeah, because Argyle was chief engineer. Now, yeah. What, yeah. what happened? Is, where did he go? Did so, he get fired? Yeah. Know. So this guy rolls up and he's like, "Ah, oh, really? Control of me? Like the captain didn't foresee this happening? Like us getting attacked, or he wouldn't have left you in charge?" And yeah. He's yeah. like, "No, if he didn't foresee this, he wouldn't have fucking left, dude. If like basically like, hey, I'm in charge. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Or I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. Is yeah, what yeah. I'm getting. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And so they can't fight it." And and basically, Jordy has to tell him, like, hey, fucker, you go down there and do your goddamn job and give me the power I need to 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 shield this or we're fucked. Get the fuck out of here, dude. You fucking bitch ass engineer. <laughs> if, if, if you knew anything, you wouldn't be a goddamn engineer. You idiot. Yeah. You'd be like, I, I don't understand what he's coming off saying. I have more experience, but you're an engineer. Yeah. It's like asking, like, I don't know, like. Like the the guy who fixes engines to suddenly become a race car driver, like it doesn't really work yeah, that way. Yeah, like it yeah. doesn't. I don't know. To his it's credit, like, Jordy like, reframes it well. He says, "Like, well, I need your experience down where you actually use it, you idiot. Go back down <laughs> yeah. to engineering and fucking do your job." Yeah. And so, uh, back on the planet, they encounter another sex toy, and this time they have to do three streams. They had to cross th three streams to get to die. Because that's a shield now. Yeah, yeah. It's got a sh it's learned. Uh, and yeah. they finally kill it, but it barely. And they realize now that it's getting smarter and smarter. And the next one there probably won't be. Able Every to 12 beat. minutes, yeah. a new one's coming that's been upgraded. And yes. Right. It's becoming and a it's problem. It's coming right at them. It already you know killed I mean? Gazer Tron. Six I mean, <laughs> Gazer Beam. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, damn it, Dan. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> And so Picard's Picard <laughs> no Picard's back in the cave. So there's three storylines really. Picard is back in the cave with like mm -hmm. uh, Barely Crusher, who's got a weird That's a survival storyline. Where yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And and Picard's already like, if she dies, I'm gonna fucking eat her. <laughs> That's how I stay alive. That's how I keep my youth. No, he's not uh, Army Hammer. He's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so then, so then you realize like the these these young uh, the ensign and and this other dude who are in the comms that they're kind of nervous and like and like so you see that that um Helena Troy no what, what <laughs> Deanna Troy Deanna, Deanna Troy. Troy yeah Deanna that was Troy. close yeah yeah, yeah you're uh, good. Helena yeah, of yeah. Troy <laughs> um, <laughs> <Deanna>. yeah. <laughs> you realize that Helena of Troy like she's like. Oh shit! Something's wrong. Like she feels it, right? And then, and then, fucking Worf is getting—he's he, losing his shit, dude. Because he tried to anticipate where the big old sex toy was going to be, so they could shoot mm -hmm. it with the photon phasers, and they missed. And he's like, "Oh, yeah. oh I missed." And, and it's also he, like, uh, it was that was Jordy's plan, and it didn't work. Yeah, yeah. So Jordy is now like, "Oh fuck!" And now the Troy is like even more worried. Yeah. So they uh, call the the engineering dude, and he's like, "Hey." Come back up here. We need you right away. Yeah, and he's I so pull excited. that because it's a really good scene blade, where blade, where blade. like he, Jordy's defeated yeah. and he's like, maybe I should call Logan back up. Yeah, and this is what happened. Bitch ass Logan. Mr. Logan, had we stayed, we would have been destroyed. There are over a thousand people on this ship. I have a responsibility to them. What about your responsibilities to Captain Picard and the members of the away team? I have a responsibility to them as well. Mr. Logan. You are going to take command of the saucer section. <laughs> Backup crew, report to the main bridge. You're going to separate? Yes, and I want you to take the saucer section and proceed immediately to Starbase 103. You can't fight what you can't see. And you still won't be able to see that thing. Maybe we won't have to. Risky. Yes. That's why we're going to separate. So one thing we missed right before that is that uh, they actually ran away. It looked like Jordy was being a coward and free. Right, away. right, right. But and then the other thing is that when Logan, I don't know what Logan's deal is. I, is he just like a contrarian? Because like when he first showed up, yeah, he he's basically like, you have said, to "Get out of here now! You got to run away." And then when he shows up again, he goes, "How could you run away? How could you <laughs> like, leave like, behind those people? Like, like what is this fucking deal?" <laughs> is he, I mean, a Republican congressman. <laughs> <laughs> sorry is he just is he just i don't know like is he just i guess he's just trying to find a way to get in charge by being a contrarian i don't know what his deal really is but 
I don't know. It's, it's just really annoying that he doesn't really have anything constructive to do. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's an idiot, dude. Um, <laughs> so then he's like, hey, you're going to take over the saucer. I'm going to take over the, the stem or whatever it's called. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, we're going to go back and pick those fools up. Um, and so he goes, for some reason, Jordy goes into the captain's. I guess he's going to update the captain's log, maybe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Deanna Troy follows him. And she's like, he's like, hey, I sense something's wrong. And Jordy's like, what the fuck? You you think I'm scared? Yeah, I'm fucking scared. I'm going to take these guys back into battle. Uh, <laughs> and he basically confesses that he's scared, but he's fine. And she's yeah. like, no, I'm not worried about you. What I'm worried about is what I'm sensing from like the young crew members that that are on the comms. I also pulled that one because it's a it's a another time where Troy actually gives a really good pep talk. So I thought I'd pull yeah. that one too. Yeah. Lieutenant LaForge, Battle Bridge is manned and ready. However, deflectors have not yet returned to full efficiency. Let's get them there, Mr. Solis. Aye, sir. I'll join you shortly. LaForge out. Did you hear the uneasiness in his voice? Solis is doing a fine job. Yes, but he isn't handling the stress as well as you are. Both he and Ensign Su are very young. No, wait. They're good officers. Yes, but they lack battle experience. They're worried about making mistakes, and they need some encouragement. What do I do? Just remember... It's you they draw strength from. They look to you for guidance and for leadership. Help them. Show confidence in them. Like Captain Picard showed confidence in me. Right. I understand. Thanks, Counselor. So, it's interesting because I I don't know if this is supposed to directly reference that but there's a back there's a backstory with Jordy where um it's not in any of the show but uh apparently the reason why Picard chose Jordy for his crew is because uh while Picard was just visiting a place where Jordy was working he like offhandedly told Jordy oh this the engine I'm driving to, that got me here uh it's, it's kind of sucky something's wrong with it mm-hmm. and Jordy took that to heart and he spent all night fixing it so once Picard realized he had done that, he was like, okay, the next time I have a crew, you're going to be on it. So that's why I thought that might be referring to that specific sort of thing because he's talking about how Picard showed confidence in me. But it could also easily just be that the fact that Picard put him in charge. I, that was my interpretation because, well, I mean, anyone watching the show would have no choice but to make that interpretation. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. There was no such thing as a wiki in the 80s. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Oh man, he's got to <laughs> give these people confidence, man. The the girl from Rambo Two doesn't have confidence. Like I do feel um, for that though, because I've like I'm a supervisor where I work, and w- early on in that role, I I've I felt like Jordy. I did. Yeah, but the, how do you feel now? Less like Jordy, but sometimes still like Jordy. <laughs> But well, I had to have a Deanna Troy every so often too. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of the nice things that happens is, uh, like, he he clearly has a much more excited way of commanding the ship than Picard does. Like when Picard is commanding, he stands still and just kind of tells people around him. Jordy's like running around the whole bridge. That's like, true. Talking that's to true. People. It's kind it's, of an it's, endearing it's trait fun. of his. Yeah, he's very excitable, which mm-hmm. is kind of cool. But the other thing also is that like. It's interesting that they keep these ensigns on when it's like a dire situation. Like I understand like the, the thematic point of it's supposed to be that the whole bridge is green, right? Mm-hmm. Jordy's not used to being captain and you know, they all have to prove themselves. But if it's that serious, maybe you should bring on someone who's not an ensign to man the con station. But is that really all you have on a ship full of a thousand people? Yeah, you that- keep on saying the Enterprise is a Starfleet like flagship, but is it really, Marvin? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it literally a bunch of is. JV people, dude. <laughs> <laughs> have but you been why, lying yeah, to why, us? Why did they? Why is the? Why is the crew all JV people? I mean, I don't. This is weird. This is weird to me. That oh, um, <laughs> so so basically, you have you have the both both teams that have to figure out what to do. Uh, Picard finds that there's this console, and the the there's now a hologram of the salesman, and realize like oh, there's a salesman, and then they find fi- he finds a console that shows him like 
that where where the little things are attacking and it's basically like they these people build a system so advanced that it killed them all basically yeah right the it's, it, they didn't know how to control it it just kept making shit yeah and so jordy and them are fighting are trying to fight fight this thing and they realize uh he first of all he inspires these young people to to fight for him yeah and they realize if you if they get close enough to the atmosphere they will become visible and then they can shoot them so they, mm-hmm. they try that maneuver and and it eventually works um when they go back to fight this these invisible sex toys yeah it's very um, it's, a, it's a very cool moment where Jordy's yeah, yeah. second yeah. plan finally works and right he and proves himself yeah yeah and then and then they're they're then the, the away team is about to get killed because they realize like oh this this is like the thing has learned so much that it's going to kill them basically in the, in the next round but the way they get saved is that when this digital hologram of the salesman comes on they're asking questions and they're trying to like figure it out and, and they can't get it nowhere. But the way they beat it is by telling it sold. We're going to buy this weapon. Shut, <laughs> yeah. shut off this. So basically the whole planet was on demo mode. <laughs> yeah. And they, fin- and, <laughs> and they finally said, we're, we'll take it. And they yeah. shut down. So basically, the whole planet was win- WinRAR, and you finally yeah. gave in and bought, bought the version and it finally yeah. stopped asking you, would you like to buy this version? Tr- yeah. You're in trial mode. Yeah. You fin- <laughs> they, they finally cl- stopped clicking. Remind me later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, this whole time, I think, the, uh, I think I forgot to mention, but uh, the, the reason they couldn't just beam them up, but the reason uh, Jason Statham couldn't beam them up was because, <laughs> Or beam himself down there and kick all those dildos asses. Um, <laughs> is that th- they kept getting attacked by the giant invisible sex toy, so they couldn't really the shields beam are up. them up. Yeah, right, the right. are up. also yeah. their comm badges just weren't working for some yeah. reason, so yeah. they well, they had that issue. We well. know why Beverly's isn't working. Mm, He's that's... incompetent and a deadbeat mom. But anyway, <laughs> that's surprisingly uh, so, inconvenient. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, finally they 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 beat the they beat all the sex toys and they bring down the shield and they they Jason s- Statham could finally do his work and they get <laughs> sucked up into the, into the ship the, the stem of the ship because the saucer is gone. Yeah, um, and they Picard's back, everybody's back, everyone's everyone's all dusty because they've been fighting <laughs> uh, and uh, and uh, battle dust. Basically, Jordy is like, all right, well, I, I'm going to relinquish control of the ship and now you have control of it. And the captain's like, nah, uh, I gave you the ship in one piece, you fuck. So I want it back that way, you stupid yeah. idiot. So you get me my other piece of the ship and you put it together and give it back to me. Yeah, and uh, uh, just for those listening, if you're curious at all, the, the non-saucer part's called the star drive section. It's called yes. the, the, the stem. <laughs> Dan's fucking wrong. Uh, <laughs> You know what uh, else? I, so, I, I thought of something else. <laughs> I, sorry to cut it off, but I, I, I just I just remembered something. Um, like the hologram guy, um, long, long, long Lovitz. He, yeah. Um, <laughs> he's so interactable when you're on the planet. How come they couldn't yeah. just do that for like the video message? Yeah, go oh, sold. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, hey, here's I, a demonstration I, of our of our like you know starship destroying power. They could have started that demonstration up there. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> this is a very, very flawed episode. Um, <laughs> look, it had some fun things, but overall, it, the the fighting sex toys was funny. Um, <laughs> well, we 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 missed the whole part of um, because Picard and Beverly are stuck together. Right. They now have a bunch of like character moments together where like he's trying to help her and like yeah. he like gives her a splint, but then she's like, it doesn't matter. My leg's bleeding a lot. And like there's a gratuitous uh, moment you- of them face to face while he's on top of her. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, look, this this whole thing. The reason I I went past by past that <laughs> is because I, I get it. Like they 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 want you when you're watching this live. They want you to be rooting for them to fall like be together. Like I get it. I get it. But it just wasn't. Uh, it wasn't working for me. Like it's like <laughs> it's like you have these. Uh, she's an idiot. She fell in the goddamn hole for money. <laughs> you know, let her die. Um, <laughs> and plus, she's a deadbeat mom. She's, she's probably better off without her. Uh, being raised by somebody else. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm starting not to like Beverly Crusher. I, I used to be okay with her, and now oh. she's making too many mistakes. 
she keeps, <laughs> she, keeps she couldn't figure out how the, the COVID thing. There's a lot of things that she fucked up on. There's been like three outbreaks of crazy things. Uh, that's that true. Can, There's been a uh, lot of viruses breaking yeah. out. Of the yeah. ship. Uh, <laughs> she should be fired immediately. In place. <laughs> um, but anyway, try to tell yeah. that to Captain Picard. Yeah, well, well, the main thing I was going to bring up because of that is that uh, I'm glad so- he killed her husband. <laughs> So the, oh, the, so the plot has ch- changed where he intentionally killed uh, Mr. Crusher. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, because he hates Beverly. Beverly. He's like, Beverly, this is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass. I feel like we've reached the shock jock era of newbie Star Trek. <laughs> We're just saying uh, shit now, aren't we? Uh, listen, well, okay. at the end, it got a hand. <laughs> but look, they, they found no minions in this planet. There was no minions, no survivors, yeah. <laughs> uh, just sex toys. Well, the well, the main reason that I that I brought up that that specific uh, portion of the plot is because the original way the script was written, she was explicitly going to s- profess her love for Picard. Really, and and an even earlier version of the script was supposed to be that Picard was the one who got injured, and she's trying to make him like survive oh and that then makes they way more lo- sense because the way they wrote her being the one who's like so injured but still having to advise picard on what to do is really awkward yeah it's really awkward it feels like he's not interested like the whole because <laughs> he keeps wandering off yeah and being it's like, like oh, i'm fading picard i'm i'm uh, Jean- shut up wake up <laughs> Jean luc I'm, I'm falling asleep yeah, no no stay awake don't stay worry awake. we'll get out of this i'm sure that's a myth by the way uh like people all it's always it's the thing you see in in fiction a lot where they keep telling someone who has a concussion don't fall asleep you're gonna die or go in a coma that's completely false. That actually isn't a thing. In fact, like, you should better. let them sleep and then turn them upside down <laughs> so that as much oxygen in the blood can get to their brain as possible. You should actually let them sleep, but that's about <laughs> Yeah. You should elevate their legs. That is a thing. Um, that does is a thing for, for at least the injury she had. But anyway, uh, yeah, the, the, the original plot was way more explicit, but then Gene Roddenberry intervened and said he... He's he's like 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 uh Shigeru Miyamoto for some reason he hates character development so he basically said I don't want them to develop their relationship more so he just shut it down and apparently yeah. everyone hated it so it, it makes sense that he said this <laughs> he's like look <laughs> you wouldn't in the, in the a few episodes ago you wouldn't let me show the goddamn Romulans dicks uh, <laughs> or the whatever they're called the Ferengi's dicks yeah, they're the, the Ferengi's, Ferengi's dicks. dicks yeah. yeah. And then now you want to do this? No. You know what? Concentrate on the fucking sex dildos in this episode. (laughs) (laughs) He's such a perv, dude. Let's take it in order. Frankie Dicks first. Yeah. Picard, Beverly Crusher, love story next. You can't put the cart before the horse. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So what would you you then then rate the episode, (sighs) Cardo? Look, I didn't hate it. I did, but I didn't like it either. So it's it's a it's a square five. It is very middle of the road, right? Yeah. D- despite a lot going on, but like yeah. it feels like it's almost a waste of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because at the end of the episode, they just run away. Like they 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 didn't save the Drake. Uh, they never. F- everyone's dead, no. presumably. Yeah. And they just run away, and is nothing really, was accomplished. The only thing you learned was that okay, I guess Jordy could eventually take over if he needs to. He has, he's got what it takes, basically. That's the unfortunate part because, like, you feel like this is planning. Like Jordy is a fucking badass. Like, you, like you feel like he's got predator vision. Yeah. <laughs> and like you really believe in him as a leader, which is like you know an interesting way to approach that character. But if I remember correctly, this is also the last time he ever mans a starship. Really? Like I don't, I don't think he's ever in control ever again. Never again, huh? Yeah, because later in the series, he'll eventually be promoted to engineering. So, which is why I keep rem- thinking of him as the engineering guy, because that's him where he is the majority of the series. But I guess he started off the series as the con guy, like he and the con station. So I don't know. Well, maybe, maybe what, what, what. What inspired him was like, dude, if, if Logan has the balls to come in here and tell me if he takes t- that, that he needs to in, maybe I should be take that job. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> or maybe he did it yeah. specifically to take Logan's job out of spite. Uh, yeah. He did it just yeah. to just to kick, make sure <laughs> Logan doesn't have a job anymore. About. It's like ah, I'm taking <laughs> your job. 
Yeah. Uh, what a that's dick when you that shows Cannon up for for now. He just he just shows up for one episode and then never again. What a fucking asshole. Yeah, I I would probably give it like like a five too. Like it's I it, I think it makes sense why I probably don't remember it at all because it's of zero consequence. Like this is one of those episodes where if you removed it from the series, it probably has no effect. Because uh, even on the, the part overall of, thing, yeah. Because like the Jordy like development according to you has no payoff yeah that's the unfortunate part like because that isn't even development it's just one blip and it never happens again so it, but it, uh, it's a nice little cool moment for jordy for that reason i'll give it a six i'll be the nice okay. guy this time again yeah yeah i mean i, I too nice dude <laughs> <laughs> uh, i like you but you're too nice <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was uh, Arsenal Frida. Well, yeah. I, I've heard a lot of girls tell me that. <laughs> oh no! Oh no, dude! Oh no, Dan! Dan is no. A that's nice. not you got, true. You, got, you gotta stop <laughs> hanging out with a bunch of Beverly's, dude. <laughs> Hang out with a couple of uh, Lieutenant Yars, dude. They know what's up. Uh, uh, next episode: it's Symbiosis. No spoilers, guys. Come on, Symbiosis. Dude, this is the one where the you know everyone gets summoned to a different dimension and they all have to fight but then picard the, comes back venom, with some black goo on his shoe yeah the venom planet <laughs> yeah this uh, <laughs> um it's a uh, prime directive episode again so I'm, i don't like those <laughs> <laughs> no the only reason why they're problematic is because they approach the prime directive differently every time. I know. It's never it's, consistent. That's why so. <laughs> we have to learn how it works every time. Yeah, every time we have to relearn what the fucking prime directive is all over again. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, but that this was newbie Star Trek. Thanks for hey. listening to our bullshit with us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you like to party, then, then you're then Ricardo. You. Yeah. Then, then, and you can't be me. It's only one. Me. <laughs> so stop liking partying. Yeah. Unless like you're, something you're, else. What's the, what's the, what's Adidas brother? Lore. Lore. Yeah. He's like, it's like when Knight Rider had that, that it, it was car. <laughs> yeah. Instead yeah, of yeah. Kit. <laughs> Wait, was oh, car man, actually yeah. in Knight Rider? It wasn't yeah, like a yeah. rival, like car show. <laughs> show? No, no. He, he was in the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was like a rival. It was it was in the show. Or actually, I thought Car might have just been a parody of Knight Rider from some other show. I think that's what no, my friend no. thought it was. No. <laughs> um, there was like Night Boat. Oh, fuck. <laughs> there, there was a f- uh, a show, a parody of Knight Rider that they're trying to make. This was before like Ben Stiller really got huge, mm. uh, and it was going to be Jack Black and Ben Stiller, and it was going to be like a Knight Rider type of show, but comedy. Oh, oh, okay. Um, and there's a pilot out there somewhere. But I never got to see the light of day. We need to bring back yeah. the, you know, the high concept sentient vehicle show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How many were there? There was um, Knight Rider and. Yeah. <laughs> there was there was another one. There was a remake of Knight Rider. <laughs> There's also Cobra. There's a, a show called Cobra. Oh, where the car the- could turn into anything. <laughs> but is it sentient? Uh, I think so. I mean it had some sort of AI because well, it could turn into anything. Well, maybe Turbo Teen counts because it was a teen who could turn into a car. The, I think Skateboard Kid counts, where <laughs> the skateboard was was um was was sentient and voiced by that comedian guy. That comedian guy who loves pizza. What's his name? I forgot. Um, he's like the big guy, Michelangelo. Uh, uh, no, no. The- <laughs> No, the, the 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 comedian who like he was in all those inf- infomercials about loving pizza and shit. Forgot his name. A comedian What's about loving name? pizza. Yeah, Dom DeLuise. Yeah, he was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he Dom DeLuise was the voice of the skateboard in the Skateboard Kid. Oh wow. So- <laughs> hmm. Uh. So and he very clearly uh like voice acted it like after the fact. Like, like there's just footage already shot and edited and put in place. <laughs> and then he's just talking over it inanely in parts where you shouldn't be talking. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's our, I think those two, I guess, we have Knight Rider and the skateboard. Well, I don't know what else there could be. Yeah. I just realized, no, Turbo Teen actually qu- qualifies as a wear car. <laughs> like an actual honest to goodness wear car. I guess so. Because wear stands so. for man. Yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, Futrama misused wear car. 
Many people do. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, newbie Star Trek. If you've been liking it, you want to see more episodes. Uh, you can't find them for some reason. You can go to newbiestartrek.com. Uh, it's n e w b i star trek dot com or newbiestatham dot com or newbiestatham dot com. That is true. And uh, you know, if you've been liking the show, you know, maybe drop by Apple Podcasts or Podcast Addict and you know, give us a a little review. That'd be very nice of you. I mean, you don't have to. It helps us helps our metrics a lot. Yeah, and then we Apparently, get more emails about what part of Canada we're beating now. <laughs> yeah, we keep getting those. What was the last one I sent you where it says like you are now the number thirty two TV review? I don't know, but in Canada or something. And I was like, okay, thank you. I just like to keep <laughs> track of Canada and how much we're winning. <laughs> ah. uh, so there's that. Also. <laughs> uh, the, the the Fugitive Frames film podcast. By uh, yeah. by the time this episode airs, Ricardo's yeah. special Christmas episode. Should be yeah, out. well, it's not a Christmas episode. It's not. It's a Christmas uh, a shitty Christmas movie episode. So okay. there's a lot of people out there that love Christmas movies year round, and um, this is it. But this is shitty movies. Like they're not good. But Lifetime. Yeah, but some of them Hallmark are so bad that they're kind of fun to watch. So, um, watch that. So, th- there's a new format to the show, real quick. I'll pitch it to you. Uh, we're doing one original episode, meaning like we'll have like a list episode, like favorite uh, erotic thrillers, favorite um, horror films. We'll pick a list. And then the second episode of the month will be like a recommendation episode. So, one month we'll do Netflix, one month we'll do Hulu, um, another month we'll do Amazon. Uh, we'll switch it up. Uh, there's a lot of stuff out there, and there's a lot of. In- there's a lot of good gems in some of those streaming shows, uh, movies that like you might have missed, uh, interesting stuff that you could look, go look back on and stuff. Anyway. Heck yeah, dude. Cool. And that's, that's, that's the Fugitive yeah. Frames film podcast. You can find that at FugitiveFrames.com or anywhere podcasts are sold. You can find both of these podcasts. like any. Literally at this point, like I think I finally managed to get it up everywhere. So uh, the last refuge that took forever to validate for some reason was Amazon Music slash Audible. So now, now you have it's no also excuse to ever stop listening. Yeah. Now you can literally say, uh, I'm not going to say the word, but A-L-E-X-A, because that, that, that might trigger if you guys are listening out loud. Um, A-L-E-X-A, play newbie Star Trek, and it'll literally play newbie Star Trek. So Alex, be- Alex. <laughs> Alexa. Uh, Alan. <laughs> Alan, Alan, <laughs> Alan. <laughs> also, you should make it so you could just change the name of your Alexa uh, to anything <laughs> you want. Like you could be like, or do hey, it Tim. like, do it like Google, like okay Google. But the Can reason I'm saying that out loud is because Anna to do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, the uh, reason oh. is because it Google Google decided to make it match your voice. Uh, like yeah. it actually takes a voice Apple ID too. Because Apple, yeah, Apple you know, does too. So like, why not do that? I don't know. Or how about we could name them after uh, characters in movies and TV? Like, mm. why not? You know, like, hey, Forrest Gump, change the channel. <laughs> That'd be weird, though. Yeah. Because then, <laughs> hey, num nuts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Drake. Uh, hey, Drake. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> yep, that's him. What? <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. Wow, I can't believe they actually got his voice. Yeah, yeah, it's just like him. Just like him. Just like he yeah. is here. Yeah, yeah. He's always drinking Budweiser. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. Also, our YouTube channel, Fugitive Games. We do Let's Plays there. Yeah. Uh, we, and it's very play. much like this, but with games. We're going through, uh, uh, what the fuck's it called? Detective uh, <laughs> Games. Yeah, we're going through detective games right now. We got is, L.A. Noir oh. and Batman Telltale, The Enemy Within. Yeah. Yeah. Both, both of which are really good. having a lot of fun with, man. I dug uh, L.A. Noir. Yep. The reason I'm laughing out loud for that, for people who are listening, because Ricardo kept doing that before the recording. He just kept bursting into this song. <laughs> by the way, that's In the Mood by Glenn Miller and his orchestra, yeah, if anyone wants yeah, to know. know. Yeah. So, by the way, um, <laughs> so at work, uh, at one point, Marvin and I worked together. And every time somebody be like, "What's the name of that song?" I'd be like, "Oh, I got it. This one." And then I play, I play YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly why. Okay, okay. Now there's way more. I have way more context now. 
<laughs> oh my like, god. I had Anytime. consciously remembered that, but I was wondering why is that so funny? I don't remember <laughs> directly. <laughs> That's like your own personal Darude sandstorm yeah, joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like what song is that? <laughs> So somebody would be like, do you guys, do you guys know that song? It's that commercial. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like when we were working on that, bam, 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 bam. when we were working on that super secret uh, music video thing, and you were like, oh, what yeah, was the yeah. song? And then you would yell it out. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the song she made. It was. Yeah. Bada, 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 bada. <laughs> oh boy. Oh man. Yeah. Oh, that's that's, that's a, a good blast. way to derail somebody when somebody has a song in their head and like like can't think of the name. And it's so close, and you're like. <laughs> You're like, oh, I got you, dude. That should become the new Rick roll in general. I'm fine with that. Yeah, like, I mean, swing wasn't a great era for many things, but music was cool. Swing rolling. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Next time we're gonna play. We're gonna not play. We're gonna watch Symbiosis and then talk about it. Yeah. Because that's a another Dan's gonna be very frustrated. I hope probably not also to be. Ricardo. <laughs> like I, I like I I'm I just bristling at the topic right now. I have no clue how they like, handle it this like, time. Like like honestly, I think TNG never does a good uh uh prime directive episode until like the last season. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, TNG doesn't do sci-fi well. <laughs> 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 TNG is just horrible at sci-fi. It's just so bad at it. We lost half our listeners. I apologize. I was just joking. I mean, would you like to? Yeah. Would you like to bring up Lord of the Rings too? Now, by the way, Lord of the Rings know, is the worst. Hey, if you, if you, it's the worst fantasy listener, series of all. You time. know that I hate Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Look, here's why, dude. I've told you repeatedly. Those dudes <laughs> wanted to fuck, and if they had just let them do it. I would have loved that movie. It was a beautiful tale about two gay <laughs> hobbits getting together, but you yeah. fucking took it away from us. You teased it for <laughs> three goddamn movies, 32 hours of footage, <laughs> but you never let them fuck. God damn it, dude. Very uh, pissed off stuff. I think, I think the thing that made it frustrating is that they very intentionally do a, no, he's definitely not gay. Don't worry about it thing with, with, um, with Samwise. Cause like, like, cause when they talk about things together, Samwise just randomly brings up, oh yeah, Rose, she's fucking hot. Man, if I would go back to the Shire, I'm going to fucking bang her. Like, you know, he's like, okay. Yeah, I remember that scene. Yeah. <laughs> Where Samwise said I don't exactly remember it. those words. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, it's like, it's like there, there is two or two afraid to, to just, just like be, leave dude. subtext there. Like, there's yeah. good you in know? this world, Mr. Frodo. <laughs> There's Beg and Rose back in the Shire. <laughs> <laughs> what do you miss most from the Shire, Sam? Uh, hot dogs and Bang and Rose. <laughs> bang and oh, whores. The, <laughs> the idea, the idea that like a native food of the Shire is <laughs> hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like at random corners of dirt roads, there's hot yeah. dog stands. Yeah, get your hot dogs here. And it's just there's a traditional yeah. Shire food. Yeah, is hot yeah, dogs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. None of that Mordor shit. Hot dogs. He's like, we invented the, the hot dogs over here in uh, the Shire. <laughs> Oh, those, uh, oh, those assholes stupid. in Mordor they put <laughs> they put ketchup on their hot dogs. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, we're we're sorry, everyone. We're done. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see you hey, next time. No, no, no. We'll the the, the Urukai eat chili dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Uh, they they do look like the type who would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right, Ram beans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Goodbye, guys. everybody. Stay safe. Goodbye. Hey, hey, hey. Until next time. <laughs> 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 I knew it. God damn it, I knew it. <laughs>